Live from the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, it's The Q at the HGST Press and Industry Analyst Briefing. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HGST. Here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back. You're watching theCUBE. I'm Jeff Frick. We're in downtown San Francisco at the lovely Sheridan Palace for the HGST Industry Analyst and Press Day. We're here getting the inside scoop on a bunch of new product introductions, a lot of new news. Joined in this uh, segment by my co-host. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, and joining us for this segment, we're pleased to have Mike Gustafson, or Gus as everyone calls Thanks. you. Uh, you're the Vice President and General, uh, sorry, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Flash Products Group. Of course, we knew you from your virulent days, which was one of the three yeah. software acquisitions that HGSD. So thanks so much for coming on it's the Cube. It's awesome to be here, Stu. Yeah, thanks. you, you know, Thank we you were Jeff. saying, we, we, we couldn't believe that you have not been on the program yet, because you know we always go for you know bringing some of the, the, the well-known <laughs> industry people. We've known you uh, a yeah. couple of jobs back, um, always been, uh, you know, ha had some of your folks on the Cube yeah. before, so glad to have you on. We can call you a Cube alum. You'll be getting the LinkedIn invitation from Jeff real soon. Thanks so much, it's awesome to be here. All right, so, so uh, Gus, software is eating the world. That's uh, what we've talked about for a lot, and we've seen some really cool hardware here, but of course, you have the software component uh, of, of what's lined up here. Uh, you guys announced uh, uh, something that you're calling device affinity. Yeah. Uh, so can, can you explain to us, for th those that didn't get to watch the keynote this morning, what is device affinity? How is it not just another marketing term? You know, yeah. what, what's the reality behind it? Yeah, sure, and I love the, uh, the opening there. I think you know, it, it's the combination of the appetite of hardware and software, and so device affinity specifically allows us to take core intellectual property that we have on the hardware side, combine that with our software side, and, and by having the, the multiple layers and the depth of understanding around that, we're able to actually connect those, tightly integrate, and, and you know, different types of handshakes provide benefits to customers around things like two times the endurance and two times the performance in our products. And so device affinity is a core element of our differentiation and uh, one that we announced today with multiple examples. All right, so uh, one of the things that really resonated with uh, David Floyer, our CTO, and myself is your uh, flash uh, fabric yeah. uh, that you announced. Uh, of course, Wikibon yeah. wrote a market definition earlier this year about what we call server sand, yeah. which is all of the great things that the storage industry did for the last 15 years to take storage functionality and utilization in network storage, and we need to bring it closer to the compute. And of course, that's what your guys' vision is. So, have you guys just been reading our playbook? I mean, I, mean, I know you <laughs> we, guys we have <laughs> been uh, d working on this for a while, but um, I ex explain to us your, your yeah. vision as to where the, the flash fabric Oh, is. I absolutely want to give you credit where credit is oh. due. I think uh, as far as the industry, I think it's something that we've definitely seen, and I, I referenced the, the fact that we saw this a decade or so ago with storage area networking, and I think you know, we do absolutely leverage the, uh, the you know, the, the Wikibon views and the perspective of server-side Flash Fabric. I think one of the things that, that maybe to expand on it a little bit is we, we view Flash as a fabric not only on the server side, but the importance of our partnerships and our different connective tissue we talked about at the array side, whether it's, you know, all Flash array, hybrid array, in the app, in the appliances themselves with a Flash uh, accelerator, or obviously with all the benefits that you know so well on the server side, and I think from an industry perspective, the vision is to do exactly what some of the things you've described is, how do we actually bring the capabilities of shared flash, creating a platform where you can actually provide high availability, shared pools, uh, you know, aggregate volumes, those types of things. And it does require a tremendous amount of software and intelligence around those devices. All right, so scalability mm. is, is a big concern when we talk about this. Flash started out, I put it into a single server and that was kind of it. Um, there's a lot of solutions out there today trying to extend that server-side yeah. caching solution. Everything from just the software-only components to, of course, VMware is doing a lot with vSAN. Can you talk a little bit about how you guys view kind of the clustering, the volume management, and the scalability of, of your solution? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to address these, and I think anything that can be done to help accelerate Flash, we, we win. Uh, and the industry wins in terms of the benefits, we win in terms of the building blocks, but you know, we've really started with a perspective of trying to think about this of, as an at-scale opportunity and an at scale problem to solve. And so from the foundational aspects of mirroring and, and HA as an example, with the combination of scale out through the clustering, whether that's clustering for cache or whether that's clustering also for scale out multiple devices. And you can see today with the announcement that we made around uh, up to 16 devices and 128 servers, how we're really breaking through and taking that now you know, to another level. 
All right, so th that product, I believe, it's HGST Viridin uh, space, That's which correct. so it pulls your, your company's name into it. That's correct. Uh, and 38 terabytes, I mean, that, that, that's pretty good. You know, talk, talk about uh, customers that you've been talking to as you're getting ready, because my understanding the software is shipping now, that's so, right. uh, you know, have people gotten their hands on this stuff? What, you know, are, are there real world environments that have over 100 servers running it? What, what can you share? So there are definitely real world uh, environments, none, none today that I could report publicly that are showing over 100 servers or 38 terabytes of a, a single pool. But I will say that the people that we've engaged with are, active, are actively looking at you know, multiple applications on the shared fabric and being able to scale to those levels. So one thing that we find all over the place with enterprises is that nobody wants to begin to architect where they know there's either a, a, a roadblock or a cul-de-sac out there uh, in the distance. So being able to confidently commit to 128 servers and 38 you know, petabytes of, sorry, terabytes of mirrored uh, flash is a huge advantage. Some of those real world examples are you know, shared storage applications like Oracle Rack, where we have a huge advantage there by being able to provide not only uh, you know, a better performance with server side, uh, with a, you know, an all flash world of, a, of an environment there for Oracle Rack, but also at a reduced cost point. And I think the benefit there not only to, to those customers, but also in, in terms of bringing Oracle Rack to more of the masses because the price points are now much more achievable for, for small and medium businesses as well. Yeah, um, I'd like you to speak a little bit more about those use cases mm. because Oracle Rack is one, obviously, that, that screams to me yeah. kind of tier one. Yeah. So a lot of the solutions if, uh, that we've seen to expand on Flash hit high performance, yeah. but aren't, don't necessarily have the services that you would put in Oracle Rack, yeah. for example. So can you speak to, to some of the use cases uh, you know, beyond that, that you see? Yeah, and I think you know they're, they're, you do see two extremes, and I won't say that they're uh, you know that they are opposites, but you do have a, a tier one kind of a highest level enterprise set of expectations when you're in an Oracle environment, and in that environment there are no compromises, whether it's on the performance or the reliability, and again combining the capabilities of layers of software intelligence through the mirroring, et cetera, is where it really allows us to provide that that capability. On on the other side, you also see people that are looking at you know just general um, open system, uh, you know clustered software capabilities where you can actually, let's take a you know, KVM example or MySQL environment as examples, where y you, you start to see the challenges of expanding and at scale with multiple pairs of servers. In this case, we can actually take this technology and provide a, a shared pool where you can create a single server that's actually the slave uh, device that provides the, the replication capability. And by doing that, you avoid the need for these duplicate pairs and driving server consolidation, in this case, as much as 37%. All right, so your software, when you were a standalone company with Viridin, was OEM by some, some big storage guys. Um, one of the big questions that people have had today is the balance between what HGST does and your customers. So your customers from HGST, of course, being the OEMs and the cloud uh, service providers. Can, can you speak a little bit to what you see there? Yeah, absolutely, and I think this is a really important point. For the, for the industry, what is driving our company and what is driving our innovation is market-driven needs. And so from that standpoint, we're looking at how do we actually bring differentiation across all of the products and solutions we talked about today. And a key part of that is that the industry is looking for more from us. And so HGST, this is a big part of our day today, is you know, not only delivering, enabling, but helping shape the industry. And, and that's by driving this specific purpose-built capabilities. It's also critically important that people understand that we're not trying to do this all by ourselves. Everything that we're doing right now is focused on the market and available and enabled also through partners if they choose to do that. And so whether it's in whole or whether that's piece parts that make sense, as you mentioned, people have worked with us in the past, whether that's uh, leveraging our open extensions and APIs or packaging up parts of our caching capabilities or being more aggressive over time, all of these options are available and, and things that are core tenants of our, you know, of our company's go-to-market strategy. So, uh, Gus, you've been through a couple of acquisitions. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I, I was looking at it. This is the second time you've been acquired by a company that has some relationship to Hitachi. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to kind of the, the cultural shift for you know your your team uh, joining the HDST. Uh, you know, did, did the software guys you know talk to the yeah. HDD guys that no, are out there, or do they all wear different colored shirts and <laughs> you know play tug of war against each other? No. Yeah. Very insightful question. Yeah. Uh, and I'll say, if I can, I want to make another point here. Yeah. I, one, I they we're very fortunate to, to have been one of the three companies acquired by HGST last year. So we, we acquired, you know, Velibit, Estec, and, and Viridin. And so the combination of all those today is we're, we're all one team HGST. 
Um, to, to your question around the software and hardware in different colored jerseys, uh, not at all. I think, you know, you heard today, and I think it's, uh, it really is a testament to early vision and action around a company is taking the, the benefits of both hardware and software. And so um, I think both the hardware device company, whether it's been for a decade or two decades, people understand that we, we have the opportunity and the market need to continue to build more around that. And likewise, if you come at the world from a software perspective, even though the Dilbert cartoons would all say that they're two very different worlds, we work together. And so uh, it's been a great synergy between uh, those companies and inside of the culture of HGST. So I want to get your insight onto just the general caching market because mm -hmm. there are a, a lot of players in the software space uh, that have been hacking at this problem. And you guys, of course, have a combination of uh, yeah. hardware and software. Do you think there's room for both of those in the marketplace? Do you think uh, you have to have the device affinity specifically uh, to be able to make this successful? What, what, what's your view on that? No, I'd, I'd like to take a, a customer-centric view of this, and I would say there's definitely room for, for multiple approaches to this. I think there are environments where one is, is better than the other, and we've, we'll, we'll show that with our own performance. But I think that uh, caching has become one of those you know, power applications where everybody knows that you can either extend the life of the SAN or the, the performance of the SAN, or through new application deployments, you know, start to see the benefits. And you know, we have, with single server cache, we have a software only approach. Um, we also have the clustered cache capabilities that we've announced in the past. And in both cases, we will actually drive some device affinity and differentiation there. Um, important note though, that while we'll generate as much as an eight times performance benefit through that device affinity, in examples like Microsoft SQL, we also provide those caching capabilities on non-HGST devices, because it's important that we're, you know, open in that, in that respect. Uh, when you're out in the field talking to customers, how, how many of them are really starting to kind of get the opportunity that's, that's provided by Flash in writing new applications to take advantage of what yeah. Flash provides versus kind of the traditional low latency, high performance, high value app? Are, are they getting it? Can you share some interesting stories about what you're seeing out there? Yeah. Some kind of native Flash from the ground up no, that's a, it's really an interesting one because right now I think, you, you know, we've all talked about, you know, when is the tipping point of Flash and, you know, I mentioned that, you know, today over 50% of enterprises have deployed in one way or another. What's tended to happen, and I think we're about to, to, to go even more, you know, faster on this, is the people have deployed in kind of point problems um, or solutions or when they needed that little boost of performance um, up, to, up to this point. And I think some of the things that have prevented more widespread step back, whiteboard and architect, the next generation of architecture are the things that we announced today. You know, all of those capabilities around high availability and clustering, et cetera. And those are required for people to actually take that next step. I did mention uh, LinkedIn as an example of a customer right. though that has been not only aggressively driving that but delivering some significant business advantage through the flash uh, strategy and the vision that they have. And you know, I, I do see, Jeff, I see more customers doing this now. I think the aha moments uh, really across the world when you actually sit down with the core architects of the storage architects and the application experts inside these companies now, starting to break down what were barriers before and understanding what's possible with Flash has really kind of opened up a little bit of that aha capability. And then the first place they go is, yeah, but. And we're now able to answer those yeah, but questions. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. So, Gus. Seeing that th there's changes that need to be ha happening in the stack, are you guys working with the, the, the folks that are creating the next generation architectures for you know, cloud mobile deployments? Uh, some of the traditional ISVs are uh, also going yeah. there. So you know, what is the relationship between HGST and kind of the application creators? Yeah, I, and I, I, yeah so the short answer is yes. So I think this is a, another benefit of being in a larger company, one that has a, a, a platform to have a discussion around much more than just uh, you know H HDD or SSD or software. It's really the whole part of how do we influence and shape the ecosystem. So specifically on the ISV side, um, many of those folks are customers of ours today on uh, the HDD or device side, and so we're continuing to have the same type of discussions Jeff just asked about. You know, being able to sit down and understand what we're doing today, and then carve out a part of that meeting to discuss what's possible on the application side. So. On some of those ISVs, I think people are beginning to realize, you know, what sort of, what sort of benefits we can get by being, uh, you know, more direct in terms of access to, or more efficient in terms of direct access to, or maybe leveraging some of the capabilities around multiple copies or garbage collection or, you know, snapshot capabilities of things that are kind of in there already and how to leverage those even further. And I think that's true in the ISV side. And we're also seeing the same with some of our largest OEMs and the same with some of our largest cloud uh, customers where, we're now having a much more forward discussion around um, you know, where the architectures are going and how we might contribute more aggressively to that. 
Yeah, since the acquisition, uh, I'm curious, do you have more access to, especially I think the cloud guys, because that, that's one of the things that really came out to me in our interviews today yeah. is, you know, HDST has relationships with those big guys, whereas, as you know, Mike, the, the yeah. traditional storage companies aren't there and, and can't yeah. necessarily get there. No, it's a, yeah, so absolutely yes again, and I think, you know, part of that is the disruptive nature of what the cloud companies have done on the, not only the supply chain, but the, you know, the economics of the models that they generate, and the fact that they bring so much of their own capability, you know, to the party, their own, you know, number of resources and insight around what exactly they're trying to do. So, uh, you know, our company, HGST, has had long and deep relationships in providing hard drive technology and, and solutions to these folks, and, Definitely with the addition now of our combined HDD and SSD portfolio with that software, uh, we're much more actively engaged in those dialogues. All right, so we're getting towards the close of our uh, cut coverage of this show. Yeah. Uh, a lot of different announcements, I mean, so, so many different pieces. Yeah. If, if As we drive away from this, what's the bumper sticker you would want people to take away and, and to know kind of who HDST and how they fit in the market? You know, I, I thought Mike had a great wrap up this morning, so I'm going to borrow it. I think, you know, this is not your father's disk drive company. I think uh, you know what we're aiming to do and what we're actually demonstrating today is the delivery of a more uh, you know forward market shaping uh, insight. We want to be viewed as that uh, thought leader, but more so we want to be viewed as those that deliver and, and help shape the market. And so I think you can see that across a, a combined platform, uh, and a combined capability of, of, uh, of products as well. So partner of choice, not your father's HDD company only, we're going to build upon that. That's a big bumper sticker. It's a big bumper sticker, <laughs> but Oldsmobile makes big cars, so that's okay. But guys, thanks for that. That's a great, that's a great way to close, and, and, and I think you're really in an interesting position where you get the benefit of the hyperscale companies and where they're really pushing the envelope, and now, as you said, you, you've introduced some technology with the enterprises. We say, yeah, that's all fine yeah. and dandy, but, and now you guys have some of the answers to the buts. So that's terrific. So, guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm Thank sure you, we'll Jeff. see you again. Um, so I'm Appreciate Jeff Frick, it. again, we're at the HGST Press and Analyst event in downtown San Francisco, the Sheridan Palace Hotel, uh, joined by Stu Miniman. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Long live data. Long live Long data. Long live data. <laughs> <laughs>